I tried to make a game in 48 hours and I failed. Well, it wasn't a complete failure, but first, hi there, I'm Mr. Bluecap and I'm an engineer from Sydney, Australia. Now, I set out to make a turn-based zombie strategy game, and to be fair, I did do that, but I set myself a challenge and I just couldn't do it this time. So if I failed, why am I here? Well, I believe that failure can be the best teacher and isn't something to be ashamed of. So, what better way to practice what I preach than to share that failure with the rest of the world? Oh boy. Let's go back a bit. At the end of March, I decided I wanted to complete a game every month for the rest of the year so that by the end, I would have 9 cool projects out of my own. And in some half-assed attempt to prevent burnout, I decided to give myself a time limit. Here comes April 1st, let's put 48 hours on the clock. On your marks, get set, code. The first week was spent creating the basic game loop. I know I probably should have started with a game design document, a timeline, or really any useful form of a plan, but all of the adrenaline got to me and I jumped straight into coding. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Starting the game generates a random grid with one hero and two enemies. When you click on a hero, a list of possible actions will appear on the side of the screen. The move action lets a unit walk up to its movement speed, the melee attack does more damage but you must be adjacent to an enemy, and the ranged attack does less damage from 2 to 3 tiles away. Now, it's currently invisible, but actions have a cost to execute. Every unit has a number of action points, or AP, and they can continue to take actions as long as they can afford to do so. Now, enemies currently have the intelligence of a goldfish. They will wander around randomly until they get lucky and a hero is within a certain distance from them, where they will proceed to chase and attack it and the player wins if they kill all of the enemies, and they lose if all of their heroes die. Week 2 was all about modelling. No, not that kind of modelling, this kind of modelling. As I said earlier, I'm an engineer, so as far as I'm concerned, Blender is the devil. Instead, I opted to use Magical Voxel, because it's as close to pixel art that I'm going to get, because I, as the grand genius that I am, chose to do a 3D game with zero art skills. Now, with the assistance of my, ahem, <coughs> friend, we came up with three characters, Aisha, Liam, and May. Using a base character that I whipped up earlier, I started making the heroes. The plan was to only make one, but I got into a groove and made all three. I also had an attempt at some tiles, but they looked like dog sh so I correctly threw them in the bin. Thanks to some tutorials, I was able to do battle with my arch nemesis to rig the characters without wanting to punch a wall every 3 seconds. Then I played around with some animations in Unity. They look a little derpy because I wimped out and only gave them 6 bones, but I think that's part of the charm. In the end, making art wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of fun. The issue is, it took 9 f***ing hours. Think about all the code I could have got done in this time. But, I didn't want another project with engineering art, so I guess sacrifices must be made. This week was all about upgrades to the game. Now that we have some good looking heroes, it's time to make some enemies. After learning all of my lessons from last time, I was able to model, rig, and import it without any issues. Me 1, Blender 0. I then had another attempt at tiles, but I didn't jump in blind like last time. I did some proper research to get an idea of what I wanted. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Not perfect, but definitely better than my first crack at it anyway. Next up was the main menu. This isn't the actual name of the game, but I just haven't come up with one yet and I needed to put something in. It was at this point I realised I didn't know how the game was going to work. Currently it spits out random levels, but they have no variety. And I know from experience it would take way too much time to fix it in a week. So that kind of forced my hand into levels which I think in the grand scheme of things is the right decision, but it's just annoying that I didn't think about this any earlier. Moving on, it was time for me to replace all the placeholder art. The goal was for me to make all the UI myself, but since I was running out of time, I decided to use an asset pack. Time for the ultimate makeover. You ready? Boom. I wrapped up the week with some coding. Players currently have no idea what is going on with any of the units in the game. So, I made a little info pop-up to display important information. Week 4 was panic week. It dawned on me just how much I had left to do, which is my own fault because I didn't have a plan. But this is where I entered speedrun mode to try and get through everything. So, try and keep up. 
If I also added a second unit info display to show additional units, I create new animation and control units and then now rotate to face what they are attacking instead of punching the air. It now shows the current enemy who is taking an action. I finally added some camera controls. I added a section to the UI that shows what each move does and how much AP it costs. I added a custom skybox base and to store what my flight creates. I also modeled a voxel tree last but not least I created some three downs. <gasps> now if your head is hurting and you feel like you missed something, that's how I felt all week. So welcome to my world suckers. The last thing I needed was some actual levels. I whipped up a little level maker that saves and loads levels from a text file. Then I got to making levels, and it was at this point I had an epiphany. It was 7pm on the final day of the challenge and I was rushing to come up with some levels for the game, and I realised I wasn't having fun anymore. I started this challenge to improve my skills as an engineer and to be able to show off some cool projects I made, but if I kept going on this trajectory, I wouldn't be proud to show it off. The quality of the game started off really well, but I panicked and rushed this final week. There were bugs and half working features, and it all kinda just fell apart. You're also probably wondering about the timer that hasn't updated. Well, that actually ran out a while ago. I tried to justify some extensions, but it was all pretty silly. So I made a decision. I had already failed the challenge, but I still love the game. So I decided to extend the challenge instead. I would have all of May to finish off the project to the standard I want, and would be proud to call my own. So that was 48 hours of me working on my zombie strategy game. As you can tell, it was chaotic, but hey, that's what game dev is like sometimes. I failed what I set out to do, but that's okay. I've learned a lot, like the value of a good plan, and I've got my drive and motivation back too, and I'm excited to see what I can get done in May. Hopefully this next month will go a bit smoother and a bit more to plan than the last one. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd love it if you left a like and subscribed. There's plenty more mayhem to unfold across the rest of the year. The goal is to make a devlog for every month I work on a project, so make sure to be on the lookout for that. And if you have any ideas for this project, or one of the many upcoming ones, or even the devlogs themselves, what you liked or didn't like, drop them down in the comments below, I'd love to hear what you all have to say. And if you think of a better name for the game, please, 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 please let me know. I think that's everything for now, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later. Cheers everyone.